So we see Quelo and Mohammed drop into the bomb hole now. Out they come. Quelo looks up the inside, can't make anything happen at all there. But, oh, Mohammed gets it. Both of them caught up. But there's Orlowski that goes through. It is Orlowski up into second. Other That's two states, uh, third and fourth. So, but looking at it now, we are going to flick back to the front with Kerup. He's been the runaway winner in this. All he has to do is keep the car on its wheels. So look at him there, over through the berm, past the driver's tabletop. Flicks it up nicely through the step up into the switchbacks. And your European four-wheel drive champion, Marcus Kerup, takes it across the line. What a drive from the youngster there. Held off world champions, European champions. You can see how happy he is. We're going to cut over to Matt McCallum shortly to get an interview with Marcus. Now the new European four-wheel drive champion. Look, you can see the emotion on his face. Super, super happy. <laughs> what a race that was. Thrown away by everybody else on the field. We are father and son. Guys, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. What was that like out there? It was so good. Making my dad proud it means a lot to me. So it's good to win. Lap after lap after lap. He just kept it going. The pressure. You didn't show the pressure. It was amazing. Yeah, it was an awesome drive. An awesome battle with Bruno. So good drive, yeah. I think it's kind of obvious how you feel. Yeah, I'm out of words. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> it's so fantastic. Guys, congratulations. Uh, we're all been rooting for you all week, so it's just amazing to see you take this. Wow, what's next? We weren't even supposed to be here. Really? We, got, we got an idea in May, in May, and Mom said, let's go to the Euros. We weren't even a member of the Federation or anything. So we got a wild card, and uh, we went here, practiced a few days with the team, and uh, he's just done amazing. I'm so proud. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, guys. Go and celebrate. Thank, Thank you. you. Kids are taking over. Hey, JQ. It's been a pretty good uh, 10 skill Euros this week. That was awesome. Yeah. Racing's been good. Close. It is. Dude, two kids just won the Euros. Like one kid from England, two yeah, wheel so drive. How, how old were they now? I think 14 uh, and 12. Yeah. 13 or 15. And how old are they exactly? I don't know, but you know? that kid, Kara, is pretty big for 13, 14. But then again, he's probably out of Viking stock. So, you know, he's probably like generations of big guys. Unlike you. Yeah. Who's just tall. Um, but yeah, and then Tommy Hall's like 16, 17. But uh, great weekend. I was freaking all out. We guys kind of just watched it live. It was kind of a makeshift thing. We could say, ah, let's watch it live and, and record it. But um. Yeah, we're going to talk about that and more on this podcast. It's kind of unplanned. I don't know if we kind of planned this or whatever, but kind of, yeah, we're just going to talk about RC, me, and my good friend, Carrot, right here. Beaker, you're like reverse Beaker right now. You're like an orange skin and green hair. That's right. That's what reverse. I'm going for. Yeah. All right. So let's drop that intro and we're going to talk all about RC this week. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this money-grabbing book races. It's hard not to be it. arrogant when you're always right. Yeah. See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Leslie the Great, with co host and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our story. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Here we go. 
Hundred bucks right here. Hundred dollar throw. Oh no! <laughs> I like this. Yes, indeed, Nitro is the glory, but E-Buggy pays the bills. Well, well, this week, it's 10 scale paying bills, JQ, no E-Buggy. But, uh, yeah, my name is Lefty, your, co your host, and my vice host over there, who's with Green Her, if you guys don't know by this time, is I'm JQ. not a vice host. Come on. Vice, vice host. No vice host. Max is vice host. Your vice, vice host. I'm, I'm trying to get you in the mood because we're going to talk about X-Ray today as well. So anyway, okay. welcome to episode number 196, JQ. We're going to have to plan uh, episode 200 for when you come back from the Euros and all that stuff because we're going to have to have a big like live show when we do that and, and have something, do something exciting. But yeah, this is episode number 196. We're four away from 200. Thank you for everybody for tuning in. It's Saturday. We just watched the A2 of the four-wheel drive leg of the Euros. Congratulations to Marcus Karup. He is the first generational two, I think the first two time like generational champions, like his dad's a champion and he's now a champion. That's pretty awesome. Two generation. Yeah. Two generation. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, and also Tommy Hall, congratulations to him. He won the two wheel drive leg. We're going to talk all about that and more. Uh, JQ is actually supposed to be packing because he's leaving for the Euros tomorrow, which will be Sunday as we're as we're recording this. So I do appreciate his time. He did race yesterday. He's now the Nordic champion. I mean Nordic champion. No, Finnish champion. Finnish champion. Sorry, Finnish champion. Uh, so you know he's riding a wave of yep. pure pure unadulterated confidence right now. That's going to be you a know, I, uh, I wanted to win this year because I won my first. Uh, won 20 years ago this year. Really? Yeah. You, it, well, you That's are. That's crazy. Right? Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a green-haired, autistic, 40-year-old man-child. Um, I'm 39, so, actually, to be yeah, honest. 40, uh, 40th not year. 40. 40th year. If you was to pass away today. I would be 39. They would say you were in your 40th year. They would say I'm 39. 39-year-old. 39 okay. Right. I mean, Man. you keep telling yourself that. Can I get on and say thank yous and, and do all of that before we start arguing? Well, first please? of all, Tommy Hall and uh, Marcus Carter are bo both 16. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You did some you did some research yep. while you were no, arguing. Noha Ben Muhammad or something yes. to that effect. He is 12. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. Uh, it's a shame he got together with Bruno there in the second main. He was in second place, finished third. So he has 3-3, three, three, I think. All right. Well, we haven't watched A3 three. yet, yet, but we will, I don't know, maybe it will happen while we're doing this. Maybe it will, and then we'll yeah. do a live reaction. So just pay attention to that. All right, JQ? Uh, and, excuse me? I hope he gets a podium. But kid. Me too. I, I really hope he gets a podium, but we're going to talk about that after we do this. Can you okay. just, I'm, I'm going to mute you now. Mute. All right. I just want to say thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. We can't do it without you guys. We greatly appreciate it. Um, I know we were supposed to have a podcast yesterday, but Max was uh, Max JQ. Uh, it was just a mix up. We do have a guest, but that will, I'll do that next week. I have another guest planned. It's not going on next week. So we're just getting a jump on things now. But thank you to the NNRC squad. Can't do it without you guys. Keep uh, liking, sharing, sobbing, all that type of stuff. We need it. Leaving comments, reviews. We definitely need that. Also, shout out to the patrons of the podcast. I can't do it without you guys. You guys help pay these bills around her, help everything out her. I greatly appreciate that. If you wish to become a patron, you can do that. The link is in the written description of this podcast. Also, we have sponsors, and I want to say thank you to them because without them, we couldn't do this either. A big thank you to Invisible Speed, JQ over there, TZ, TZO 200 Tires, New website is up. We need to get Nick on her. High Tech RCD, TNR Fuels, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Lugs Racing Tires, JQSM, G Spec RC Tuning for all your cabling needs, Papa Willie's Traction Tonic for your traction needs, Sun, Sun Padao, USA. I'm always getting that mixed up. I even spelt it wrong. 
Racecraft USA, Clinic RC, RCGP, House of RC, JTP RC, and of course, check out the Viking and his race shop uh, for all your Mayako needs there in Sweden. Uh, yeah, man, big thank you. Also, uh, real quick, a race announcement coming up. RC3 in Huntsville, Alabama, invite you to join them August 6th to 7th for the 13th annual Rocket City Challenge presented by Futaba, averaging about 200 entries annually. The Rocket City Challenge is one of the South's premier outdoor official outdoor off-road races. With a two-day race format, you're able to enjoy a laid-back racing atmosphere while battling out with some of the fastest racers on the East Coast. This race, race also features fun events like Buddy Race, the Pit Stop Challenge on Saturday night, and to give races, it's a way to give racers a fun way to wind down from the long day of qualifying. With grand prize giveaways like a Fataba 10PX and a HP E8 19RS, this is one event you won't want to miss. Check us out on Facebook at RC3 Racing, or for more information, visit us online at www.rc3racing.com. Sorry, RC3 Racing. Uh, yeah, check them out. Uh, great track down there in Alabama. Uh, I used to hear about them on the Voice RC podcast a lot, so that's how I knew about them. Uh, checked out their race. JQ, uh, I don't know what to call you now. Hold on, let me unmute you. Let me unmute the man child. Hello. What's up? So I have a burn to pick with you real quick. Uh, okay. So you had your midsummer last weekend, which was cool. It's like when you Nordic people kind of freak out, like complete opposite. I look at Rana Falk. He's like, with his, like, you know, like with his girlfriend, I like looking all different. And you send me pictures of you with dark smeared over your face and a big smile. Like, and your friends driving motocross bikes into the lakes and spraying you with mud. And then this guy is sending me video of like, it's three o'clock in the morning and it's sunlight and sticks up his middle finger. Now you do all Actually, of this. And I, I, wait, no, wait, I, wait. There's a funnier story to that. So uh, that video, for example, I uh -huh. sent to your number, but it was your old number, but it was oh, received. Right. So someone, some random person has me sending the videos <laughs> at 2 and 3 a.m. in uh, Finnish time. Uh, showing how bright the sky is and giving middle fingers yes. and dirt bikes and stuff. So they must wonder, who is this idiot sending, <laughs> sending me this message? I really, I need to get the picture that you did. I'm going to find it one second while I'm doing this. So I appreciate all of this. You know, you know my boy, I enjoy. Tell us a little bit about, a bit about Midsummer while I find this picture because it was so epic. I have to put it up here. It's like when you guys what just freak out, right? That? With you covered in dirt and just the, like the biggest smile on your face, like your glasses. Those aren't public pic pictures, but um, yeah, that was I got roosted. I was I was uh, filming, trying to film a clip of this guy riding his bike into the lake and doing a turn. But then he, when he came out, he did another turn and just roosted me completely, ruined me with mud. Yeah. So I don't know yeah, why that that's not it. a bad picture. That's a very funny picture of you. You actually look okay. very much like Beaker. Very much. Okay, yeah. So well, my, my point, then. my point to all of this is you send me all these pictures, right? And all this cool stuff. And I think it's funny. I'm happy that you send this to me, but yet at a, at a freaking race, I can't even get one fucking lap, one lap. I'm like, Hey JQ, how about a one minute fucking video of the track that you're at? So I can put it on the Instagram and the face on the, eye on Inst in the, Busy on at the races, you know, Hey, nothing, not even a uh, fucking acknowledge not even a blue tick next to my whatsapp yeah no no there is a, that's the most important there is a blue tick he sees it and completely ignores it so you know like just imagine my frustration you know but for for pictures of him covered in mud yeah we got that but a picture of a lap of the track that you was at yesterday no we don't get that anyway i know you want to talk about this Oh, you're now the Finnish champion again. You beat Max. I have a picture of you with Max too. Um, but yeah, this you so 20 years of you winning this race now. Well, you haven't won it for 20 years. How many times have you won it in 20 years? Actually, we were trying to figure that out, but can't find results from 2003 to 2008 or something like that. Uh, I don't know uh, what happened in those years, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but the re years we've found, I know I've won seven at least. Okay. So I don't know the rest. But many years, it's a series. So you have to do four races. And 
there are many years where I only did two, for example, or something like that. Oh, yeah. This Here we one. go. I got pictures like this. Roosted. People. I got pictures like this, but I can't get a freaking lap of the track that is at. That looks like uh, it could be from some kind of strange Italian porn. Dude, yeah, her is like almost in coordination with the green grass. It's super right, because what it is, yeah, it's it's fresh. It's just green. So I look at this is what I look at JQ, and then I look at Ronald Fox pictures, and it's like all clean and dressed up in white, and you know, looking all professional. And this is what I get from JQ, a autistic yep. different green kind of midsummer. Yeah, well, it's it's yeah, I would say so too. Um, for what is midsummer? So people that don't know what it is, they know what it is. Uh, it's the that's the longest day of the year. So after that, then the days start getting shorter again. Mm -hmm. So towards the dreaded autumn and winter. Yeah, because you guys really just like like for people that live in the cold, you seem to feel cold quite a lot, easily. And really don't like the cold. So, but no, you still no. enjoy living there. I, I just find that utterly confusing. No, I was just born here. I, I don't enjoy living here other than in the summer. <laughs> well, I mean, as a person who has not lived in his home country for many years, I, I am one to talk. So I understand that as well. All right. Well, congrats. Oh, so how about Max? Talk about Max. How was he? Um, uh, it was Max's girlfriend was there. So I oh, met Max, Jesus, Max's no. girlfriend for the first time. So oh, she is real. Yes, she exists. Uh, that was a surprise. <laughs> she is taller than him, too. Well, Max isn't very tall. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was sure that Max would just have a tough time focusing and concentrating when his girlfriend was there. And but he did okay anyway. So your plans he, of... he finished third. Yeah, he did. He, I did talk to him. I'm looking for the picture that I have of you both because it's so cute. It's so cute to see this. I, I just, you know, you know, to see which, which it's, it's like reverse that? Jedi. You know what I mean? Like, um, it, like if this was like the Jedi world, it would be like when Obi Wan and freaking Anakin Skywalker came back together and were were if they ever came back together and were Padawans again, like. Oh, you know, teacher and a accomplice. But with you guys, it's reverse. It's because you were the dark side. He went over to the light side. He went over to associated. Went over there. Now he's back with his Darth Sith master at this Good. race. Hold on. Let me find it. Let me find it. There we go. Look at you. Look at look. It's so cute. Look at him. You look like a damn carrot and not the Ronda Drake baby carrot that you keep joking about. You look like a goddamn carrot. You got your skin is orange and your hair is is green. Yeah, I was in, I was on the phone with uh, customs or FedEx trying to get my <laughs> parts out of customs for the euros. Unsuccessful. So uh, that sucks. Why am I not surprised? And Max, contrary to him having heat stroke uh, in Spain. Looks like he desperately needs some sun. He hasn't been feeling well, though. He, he had a, a wisdom tooth come, out, come in, and um, he's, it's kind of made him sick. A lot of people think Barry knocked him out. But no, there's Barry's son right there. But he's now with his... Look at it. Look, I mean, it's just you guys are just born. This is like the closest thing you have right now to a son. You know? It's <laughs> this guy right here. And he's yeah. back in the field. And this is... They're like telepath right right now. They're actually probably thinking like telepathic te telepathically talking to each other. Yes, because I've seen JQ and this other guy do this too. I seen you and Jimmy Deprez like talk telepath like communicate. Maybe as in like um where was it when we went to that El race? Paso. Yeah, and you two was sitting in front of against it. like if you ever want to see two guys like realize stuff and talk as minimal as possible. It was watching you and him. What do you think of this? Then, like, I swear you guys, like, just communicated via brainwaves or something. They're both, like, engineer guys. But shout out to Jimmy. And uh, anyway. Anyway, JQ, enough about that. Uh, it's good to see you and Max racing again. Um, that was awesome to see. But we had a lot of action this past weekend. We had the... Should we start right off with the? Should we rant or should we just start off with the Euro the the X-ray 
Well, let's talk about it. The X-ray conspiracy at the Euros this past, last weekend. It was last weekend. Sorry. Uh, so the, the touring car Euros were held at Hoodie Arena. And it seems as usual, like any anything that goes happens at Hoodie Arena seems to come up with some sort of controversy. Um, have you been following it like about the tires exploding and all that type of stuff? And and then uh yeah, I don't know, like a lot of people are upset about it. And well, a lot of people that didn't win were upset about it. I get that. But I I don't know, like my my thing is kind of like hey, it's it's I mean, did they cheat or did they just stretch the boundaries of the gray area, which X ray does? Did they do everything um, that they needed to win? And that's why they won? Yeah, they or did. did they? The thing is that, uh, actually, I forgot I was supposed to read their statement they put on. I've actually got it up here now, so I'm going to read it while you oh, But there are just... I I don't... I'm not saying that they they cheated, but they definitely stack the deck in their favor. Right. So mm -hmm. let's say that, yeah, okay, anyone can go and practice, but practice is like on a Tuesday or something. So if you want to go and practice for multiple days, how, how, would you, how do you do that? You know, because mm -hmm. the track won't be open for multiple days all day long in a row. So it's very inconvenient for anyone to go there and practice because of their opening hours. But of course, themselves, they can do it 24 7. So there's that, but that's not cheating. You know, it's a private facility. You can have your mm -hmm. hours however you want, but when the opening hours are such that it's inconvenient, borderline, uh, it's not impossible, but like you go and practice on a Tuesday for a few hours and then hang around for four days and practice again a bit or like, no, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. make any sense, right? Right, right, right. So no one you. will do that. So the way mm -hmm. they structure it is in a way where no one will fly to a different country for practice there right then uh they have a warm-up race okay fine then one week later they have a race that's only open for x-ray drivers so you have to have an x-ray to race mm. and then it's the euros so the, i mean those kind of things it's not cheating but it's not fair either it's it's those kind of things that i think that people uh get upset about don't like and get upset about it's like e everything you can do you do to sort of favor yourself yeah but i yourself mean yourself an advantage isn't okay so let's let's step out of let's let's try and be neutral here let's be switzerland is that doing everything that it takes to win yes or, but that's also why is it we immoral should have is it I mean, effort's fault for not placing more yeah, that's, that's why we should have stronger federations, because if we are going to have these big championships that companies spend money on and uh, invest in their drivers, in in equipment, in testing, in preparation for the event, in the event itself, then those events, they can't really be held at some manufacturer's home track. It It doesn't really make sense. To me, like we oh. spoke when Barry was on, like if it's a world championship, effort should be made to make it into a big spectacle to promote the whole hobby to the outside world. So you build mm -hmm. a track somewhere where a lot of people will see it and then you race. And when you do that, it's a new track. It's fair for everyone. Uh, same, same goes for Euros. Maybe not at that scale, but pick a track that isn't a manufacturer's home track or it's not always like it's some top drivers home track you know and rebuild it make it new for the race in on road they can't obviously do that but still the same idea you can't go to one of the leading manufacturers backyard and run a euros or worlds i just don't think that's fair okay uh, what about the tires so they're saying in their statement that like because of the extreme hot temperatures that the tires are blowing and then you you heard bruno's Thing. hey we did this we did that we did that and we, and we did this yeah but if you look at the race he didn't exactly look slow and also i heard that uh i heard 
now this is just what I heard, so I don't know if this is a fact, but I heard that LRP uh, had a, a speed gun and was mm. checking, you know, speeds on the straight, and he was the same speed as the other top guys. You know, like it wasn't like he was slower on the straight, to right, save right, his tires right. or something. You know, like he was the same speed. Um, and also in on road like that, it's if you're lacking top speed, then how can you be fast on a big outdoor track like that? Come on, let's be honest here. Yeah, I, I don't know why um, he's he didn't have issues with tires. I don't know why Volker, for example, had so many issues with his tires. Uh, car setup does affect uh, tire wear, driving style does affect tire wear and de- degradation. Uh, but I, the thing that gets me is they knew that this was an issue. They must have figured it out. They had extensive amount of time to figure it out. And others so let's did. say, yeah, and, and let's say that they did figure it out. They, that's fine for them, right? They mm-hmm. can go to the race and say, we have this issue. Other, other people get four practice rounds to figure out what they pra- figured out in a month of testing or three weeks mm-hmm. or two weeks or whatever, right? So that seems a bit uh, fishy to me, that you go into the race knowing that there's an issue, you have a solution for yourselves, and other people show up and have four practice runs. To that, figure that's it out. difficult. That's difficult. Yeah. But but they didn't break the rules. At the end of the day, they 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 play, they played within the parameters of the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also... I think that they they could have done something. I mean, the problem was only in modified class. So why not then just have a different spec tire for modified class? Like find a manufacturer, hot race, or some someone else who has enough tires, not for the whole event, for everyone, just for modified class. How many there was like what, twenty five drivers or something in modified? Like there wasn't a lot, I think, right? Wasn't yeah. the entry quite small for modified? Yeah. Seem to remember it was. that. It was. Yeah. So it's not even that many tires that they needed. Just get some uh, some control tire that won't blow up and run that. Uh, the so thing about can, it is... I can definitely understand everyone's frustration. I can understand everybody's frustration too, but then I look at it and I said something on Monday's podcast uh, with Hefty and Riley. That we always said that the, the testaments operate in this gray area too. You know what I mean? Like... They stretch the borders. I believe they are. And I, and I think that's just doing what it takes to win. Uh, and, and when I mean like that, like I said it openly, I think like Ty knew he would be over the limit. You know, like they just knew like, oh, if we had that now tank, I, I'm not saying they knew, but you know what I mean? They they would want as much runtime as they can get. So they would be on that exact fine line. You know, that's a gray area. Sometimes you go over, sometimes you... you that's just... not a gray area. Everyone does that. No one wants to get... Uh, I get that, but they go... To, I think they go to the other... Like, they do things like, remember at that time, and I think it was at Reedy, maybe? Was it at Reedy? Like, they put in their cars out in front of... You know, but that's just mind tricks, too. That's a lot of things that go yeah. into racing. That's what... Uh, but as for... Uh, so does this take, in your opinion... And, and Bruno... The thing is, like, Bruno Coelho can win this. Like, there's, there's no issue... Like he's still like the best touring car driver in the world. Does this take away from his win at all? All this controversy? I think he still I, won the race. I mean, he's still an amazing driver. He could have won on any track. Uh, he almost well, he was in the running to win uh, four wheel drive just now, mm-hmm. uh, off road the week after. And next week will be eight scale off road, and he'll be a contender there also. So obviously, an exceptional talent. A great driver, but I in have, my um... opinion, like the perception among the his competition, I don't think they give that win as much respect as it they would if it was someone else who won there or him winning at some other venue. Okay, because of all the things that we mentioned already, like trying to hand him at an advantage, right? So, but I don't think yes, he, he needs... could win anywhere, but. Him winning like that, I I think it doesn't get him the same level of uh, respect. <clears throat> but what? back in the day, like Masami has all those championships, there was way worse things that happened back then with yeah. no tire rolls and him having tires no one else had and cheating with batteries and this kind of stuff that you just hear about, you know? 
Right. So you heard that about there. you heard that about the eight scale uh, on road worlds a lot too. Lots of uh, accusations. Yeah, accusations even with uh, Kolari also. Yeah. And sometimes even I mean he was caught with uh, some illegal fuel. I think one year. Wasn't right. He? Right. So all kinds I just of stuff think, like I think, that. It just happens. But I think the talent of Coelho, he doesn't need, he can do it with all, all of this. And, but at the same time, at the same time, some little small part of me just admires X-Ray's tenacity to, to do what it, whatever it takes to win. A small, I'm like, wow, like these, like, that is that the, is that the little bit that maybe the other comment is, okay, probably they couldn't, or they, you know, yeah, it's also a different situation because it's being held at a manufacturer's track. But, I mean, X-Ray goes to the limits to win, man. I mean, we've seen it. I mean, look at when at Neo when they when Ty had to switch tires. Look at Martin Beyer at the 2014 Worlds when he was he had to switch. You know, X-Ray's like, hey, you're going to go on the tires that work. You know what I mean? Don't And so X-Ray's always kind of had some sort of... <clears throat> I... I I want to say tenacity or willingness to just go to the outer, to the very limit to win. Yeah, and a I little part of me I, admires that. I I have to say I don't admire that at all. Like I I get that people do that a lot, but for me, let's say that uh, Ronne Falk has a chance to win the world championships, okay? Mm-hmm. And I knowingly do something that I know is cheating. And then he wins. I wouldn't feel good about that. I wouldn't feel right about yeah, that. But like, if, I am not that you... kind of person. Like many people, oh yeah, we won. They don't care how they win as long as they just win the race and they're happy. Mm-hmm. For me, it doesn't work that way. Like the win is one thing, but the way you win is another. And that okay. matters. Like okay. even even like um, these races in Finland now, on a whole different level and scale and whole different thing. But even the way I won the first race and and uh, the championship, like all three races, I wasn't happy afterwards. Just because it's not just the result that matters to me, but the way it happens also. Okay. Does that okay. make sense? So yeah, if I'm not I, happy I that. about my own performance and I win, some people don't care. They're just ju- equally happy. But me, I'm not. Some people, they can cheat. They can take people out. They can do whatever. And they win. They're just as happy as anything. But I, I wouldn't be like so. For me, I don't admire that kind of stuff. If everything is fair and equal, everyone is happy, and then you have a race and you win, that's great. That's a great situation. Of course, when you lose, you won't be happy, but at least you respect it and you think everything was fair and you lost. Mm. You know. So, excuse, uh, I understand that too. But I think what I think you're missing my point of this is that is that that extra bit. That makes you a champion, just willing to go to that very edge. You know what I mean? Yes. And I think I think you have to go yes. there sometimes. No, it just seems that X-ray goes there all the time. Like you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, look, 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 and Coelho. So I have Fend as the best all all around off road driver at the moment. But I think if we was to say best all around driver at this at this moment in time, it has to be Bruno Coelho. I mean. So he's going from, he went from 10 scale touring car to Robin Hood Raceway, which was AstroTurf and a completely different, no flat little, you know, this is like AstroTurf over dark bumps, and jump, like, you know, this is like off-road built with AstroTurf. He goes to that, flops in two-wheel drive, makes the main, but isn't, isn't competitive at two-wheel drive compared to those young guys, but is super competitive in four-wheel drive. And then he's going to then... Yeah, TQs. Now he's gonna switch switch gears and he's gonna go do eight scale nitro, which is something he does very little of, by the way. And to be honest, I think he can be top five or top three at this race because of the track, the way it suits and the you know yeah, the, the I, I think all he, that type of stuff. He'll definitely be a contender at the eight scale mm-hmm. heroes, I would say. So he's he's definitely for me right now, maybe the maybe fan the all around best off road driver in my opinion. But for all around just talent, like it's Bruno, like it's Bruno. Even Barry messaged me after the X-ray, um, after the world, after the Euros, and I was like, "Yeah, that you know him. He was that's right up his alley. That's touring cars." He was like, "It's BS," you know. That's his statement on it. And I was like, "I get it," but I think back would 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 
so much things you heard about what that can went back on going on in a day. Like this is yeah. minor compared to that. But um, yeah, he's champion, and then he got they go to so we Maso just go straight into the Euros her held at Robin Hood. This is the last race that you went to a Euros intense scale and made the A main, I believe. 2015. Yeah, but it was on the dirt track. Yes, right. But it did have some Astro Turf spots. It looks there like was it's... some carpet on the track. Right, but it was right. Like okay, some jumps, but it was dirt. Right. So we go to this race. Um, it it's it's one of those week long races too that I think is kind of weird. But I do appreciate that they do switch it up a little bit. But this race could be cut short, I think. And couldn't it be done like they do it in America, just two wheel drive and four wheel drive, and do it in like three days? No, there's no way. Why? Because uh, you get so much. There's so much track time. There's, I don't know, six practice runs and five oh, okay, qualifying okay, runs okay. and triple A mains. I'm just thinking that singles it's up, for the lower ones. Like, no, I'm just thinking no that way. it's it's the longest Euros out there. If you think about it, you have to be there for Monday, before Monday, till Saturday. Six days. Yeah. All right, but anyway, that's three but I do. Three. It's okay. I do like the fact that they. I do like it though that you, you also maybe switching between styles makes it up for better racing as well. You know what I mean? So going like where you can focus on two wheel drive and then go to full uh, four wheel drive. But first ten scale Euros, uh, first ten scale Euros probably in England since 2015 as well at Robin Hood. Um, we're gonna have Martin Owen, the Emperor of Everything, on next week. He's the head of ten scale at the BRCA. We'll talk more about that, but. For me, I was freaking out earlier on this because every, you know, I thought like, oh, Coelho, Orlowski, yeah, them guys are gonna kill it. Like that's just, they're just gonna run away with this. But like people were like, no, you gotta watch the whole brothers. You gotta watch this kid Carp and all this type of stuff. And I was like, you heard that all the time. You heard people tell you you gotta watch this person, you gotta watch that. But wow, like was I shocked? Was it? It was for me. It was a very. I thought that the young kid uh, Tommy Hall winning on Wednesday was great for RC was great for the Afra was great for the BRCA was great for um, just RC in, in, in period, like around the world, everybody can be happy. Like when a six, seven, 16 year old kid beats off some, okay. People would say there was no Angaro, there was no Rana Falk or nothing like that, but these guys only do 10 scale when it's like a world year, but he beat, in in that in that uh, in Europe, he beat some of the best, if not the best, carpet astroturf racers in the world. You know what I mean? He beat Arlovsky, he beat Coelho, uh, he beat legends like Neil Craig. Lee Martin didn't make the main. It's uh, we're definitely seeing a slight changing of the guard there because, and then Karup, who was super fast, like I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like all three A two A one. A mains of the two wheel drive was very exciting. Very exciting. Um, those guys were just letting it all out. It was super pumped for it. And then, of course, we just saw the young kid, Kara, win uh, four wheel drive, who I also heard is pretty good at eight scale as well. Uh, just great results for RC. Like, this is what we, this is what legends are made of. It seems like England has also, also, or Europe always produced like a young racer who's one of yours, very young and going on to be great. But we haven't seen it for for a very long time, so it's good to see. And at the end of the day, like, isn't this what a lot of people? Maybe not you, maybe not me, but a lot of people got into. Look at the kid Kyra. Like his dad is a two time, actually two time European champion. I was told, and um, now he's a European champion. Do you like that's like that's like what stories should be written about? Like that should be propped up. People should be talking about that. And I think that's awesome for the for the industry, awesome for the hobby, awesome for the sport. How about you? How do you feel about it? You don't seem as excited as me. But then again, you know. Uh, I think that uh, this is the type of race where you'll see that next generation do well. Because racing on that surface and the short five-minute races, just going for it, it's very mental. Mm. It's a very mental uh, game. And I think here you can see it because, for example, in four-wheel drive, Bruno has the equipment and the skills to win that race. Uh, but 
the difference between uh, Bruno and Cairo, I think, is mental at this point. Because mm-hmm. Bruno is there to win. He's expected to win. That's, you mm-hmm. know, he gets paid to win these big races. His TQ, he needs to win. The pressure is on him. Cairo, he's like just happy to be there. Like, hey, I'm second. This is awesome. Maybe I can win this. So he's just going for it. Mm-hmm. And he's not holding back. He's not afraid of mistakes. Where I, I think that Bruno had that in the back of his mind, you know? I don't know. He's going for it, but he also knows that, you know, this super grippy surface, this is a tricky part. Maybe he'll, if he makes a mistake here. Like when you have that in your mind, like somewhere, even if you aren't consciously thinking about it, but it's there, it affects you. And then when the first mm. mistakes comes in, then the pressure is even higher and you get nervous and, oh shit, I'm going to lose this kind of. And then it's all down, downhill from there. But those young kids you saw, like even this uh, French kid, 12 years old, uh, Mohamed, you think he's thinking about that? No, he's just cool to drive my RC car here against these big boys. And he's just punching it. So there's there's no... Uh, no fear. There's no doubts or fears. Mm. You just go for it. And that's how you can be really fast on this kind of... Uh, especially on this kind of surface. It's just five minutes. You go for it. You keep it on its wheels for five minutes. You, you're going to be up there, right? If you have the skills and speed. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the difference. So it will be very interesting to see what happens now. Because now, for example, Tommy Hall has now won and Cairo has now won a Euros. What next? Like, mm-hmm. do they become uh, established top drivers or was was this it? You know? Because now they're, they're 16, so 17, 18, 19. It's going to get harder now. Yes, yes, it is. Mentally. Mm-hmm. They have the skills and they will improve their skills. And they have whatever talent they have. But mentally, it will get harder, right? And expectations will be harder. Yeah, so that's the difference. You come in with no expectations, no fears of failure, no doubts, just confidence, having, having fun, going for it. You win. And uh, this is where we see what they truly are then made of. I mean, this is amazing in I itself you. already. Mm-hmm. But now let's see what happens next. And I think, I don't think there should be immediate, like, oh, these guys are favorites to win every race pressure on them. You know what I mean? These, these are still young racers. I think maybe because he seems to, like, I was watching that EOS and he was fast and, you know, you got mixed up with Orlowski. Maybe... I, I, I'm, and I'm not, and I heard the whole brothers are really good too in, in eight scale in England, but I think on a, and I'm not, it's no disrespect to the whole brothers. I think Karak maybe has a little bit more international experience. And look, look, when you got a dad that's behind you like that, like, and you know, he's one European, it, it makes a difference. Like I'm just saying Karak to me, as much as I, as much as, as happy I was for Tommy Hall and his brother, and act, at, at one point he's actually racing his brother. Isn't that cool? Too, his brother was right behind him, yeah. and they were racing each other. Two two sets of brothers in them, hand. That was cool. yeah. Um, I think with Carol, I think his when he came off that stand, like he, like he kind of has that, yeah, like that. I want to say the glow. Does that the flow? I think he has it. I think he's one of the kids that has it, and it's gonna be. Does he, is he going to, how rapid is he going to improve from now on? Is he going to be able to stay? Because now the increments to get better, they go down from, you know, like it, I've seen it all the time. And the guys go from in America when they go from intermediate to pro, like, or even with Max, when he went from like intermediate to pro, like the, imp- the increments to get better in pro come very, very far and few between. And they're very small, unless you're extremely, extremely talented, you know, and putting in a lot of work. So, well, I'm just happy that we have the youth because I've been all about the youth. It's great to see the youth coming along. It shows um it shows in two years off of COVID, like these young guys have been getting serious. Um it shows I think I want to shout out and give kudos to the BRCA because I think they're they've done a great job cultivating a great 10 scale culture as well, trying to keep it as fair as possible as and whatnot. It seems to be in Europe as well with just the with the racing going on. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess this is what happens when you have working federations that work with one, you know, as much as we complain about it, this is a good thing. Like it was good. 
Uh, I thought that so far we haven't watched A3. Where it's probably going on while we're watching this. Um, I'm just super pumped for these young kids. Like, like, and especially the Muhammad, like I'm, I'm going to love to watch and follow his career coming up uh, here shortly. I hope these, they don't become just 10 scale only racers. I do hope they become eight scale racers as well. Yeah. And I'm actually curious to see, we've spoken about it before, how all, all the old drivers are still the ones that are getting paid. And mm-hmm. they are the professionals and then these young guys come in but then they never get sort of the paid deals really and they never really make right it and they give all up. the way you mm-hmm. know because they you know they've spent parents have spent all the money they've won some races uh, other interests come in girls and school for some and you know it's just well what the hell am i doing with this yep Yep. Because they never got that sit, got that deal that if you think someone like Mayfield or Rivkin or mm-hmm. Tessman or Ronne Falco, all these guys who, or Robert, who at some point, who at that point, or a bit before that, got good deals, like right. 100% right. all the travel salaries. And then it's like, okay, this is actually a career now. Like I can do this as my job mm-hmm. full time. So now at this point, it's interesting to see that do some of these old guys lose their deals or do they get much worse deals? And do some of these young guys get those deals? Because so they ain't that much money to these, go around. If, yeah, if you're like 16 now, that's kind of the age that many of these current pros became pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, so does that happen or not? Neil Craig is an interesting outlier because he's a world champion, multiple European champion. But he's never been a fully professional driver, no. which is crazy. Like he's got some kind of money from his sponsors, RC. but he's all, always also had a full time uh, job, a real job, non RC job, right? And yeah. he sort of wanted that, preferred it that way. Yeah, he has. And he's still making A mains at Euros, by the way. And probably the long, yeah, yeah. And he's, and he's probably the longest ever running associated driver ever, ever so far. Yeah. Um, I think from, Maybe from day one, even. Yeah. Unfortunately, we won't get to see Lee. Uh, I I won't be able to get, uh, sorry, Neil come to RCGP because he has to run the 10 scale nationals, I was told. Uh, But interesting. Okay, so I I have a question for you. Uh, As if you was a manufacturer, well, you are a manufacturer. If you was a manufacturer with a budget on limit, which you, okay, let's say my, uh, let's just use Mayako. Let's say Mayako has a 10 scale program, all that type of stuff, blah, 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 blah. Out of these young racers, who would you go for? Right to now. Sign, to sign <clears throat> in somebody, Europe. You well, do we want to do a worldwide thing or do you want to just do let's do these are these young youngsters that just done well at this Euro at this Euros? If you are if you, okay, you're gonna give one of these these guys a deal and pay him. Which one are you paying? Well, I wouldn't pay him at this point, but I would uh make sure to sign the Noha Ben Ben Mohammed guy really out of all these young yeah guys. i think so because he's also from france france is a good market you get a top guy in france central european location also yeah development maybe too young you can develop yeah. him build yeah. him into a little sith lord yeah but uh, in those situations it's also important to know more about them and who who they have around them and all that stuff so right because but, uh, let's, this is let's... just like hypothetically if I mean, but let's face it, the, what, what, this, what these wins does do is say, hey, we just became European champions. Now what? You know, and yeah. associated, they're both associated drivers. And associated doesn't ain't gonna be able to pay these guys. Or, you know, I don't know what the financials are, but, you know, you can only go so far. They got Rivkin, they got Evans, they got, like, yeah. I don't know how. You know, they got so it's, much people uh, on your roster. I always think that it's amazing how associated can have so many just really good talented kids all around the world it seems mm-hmm. who just run and associate to become really fast because some it's cool. stick around some some lead they're just so like such a long-standing company in, in the industry so so uh well established in every market that they have a really good distributor there they have good availability of parts and of course they offer the 10 scale cars which are often sort of entry level cars to racing but it's it's always impressive to see 
Like you yeah. have these races where, I mean, I wonder how many championships Associated has won where the driver that won was like not a fully a sponsored driver, professional yeah. pro. Like it's just some kid who's sponsored by them direct or through the distributor, gets some free stuff and that's it. And then they just go to Euros and they win it or nationals and win it like raw nationals or even worlds yeah and, and do really well so put it in it's the amazing main. but it's what happens when you have heritage you know what i mean yeah. like that I, I will say that um speaking of heritage uh i know we didn't talk we didn't we didn't mention this but uh before we go on and talk about the eight scale euros coming up tlr finally released their new car Oh, yeah, I haven't I mean, asked your opinion. Uh, Have you looked at it at all? I haven't looked I haven't. at it much at all myself. I've seen every TLR driver I know freaking out and getting it. But uh, I thought maybe you had some thoughts on it. Uh, maybe I'll just ask Barry's son next week. Yeah. We yeah. should have him on and talk to him about it. Who, Barry? I'm sure he wants to come yeah. back one. He said anytime he wants. He, he, I think he enjoys it, the banter. He, I, you know, I did a, a banner saying Barry's son. Matt, you know, and he, and he sends me a message right away. Not my son. So, yeah. All right. So, we'll, I'll I'll save that for Max next week, and we'll get some opinions on the. I'm interested to see how the car does in the hands of the normal guys, you know, because that's where I, I heard the most complaints from were from the normal guys. Some guys liked it, some guys didn't. You know, I struggle with. So it'd be interesting to see. Um, and they did it like an electric. And e bug like you could it could be an e buggy or nitro conversion something similar how they did their truggy that time. So uh, we shall see. All right, Joseph. So uh, you are packing up to head off to Portugal tomorrow. Are you excited? Yeah. Uh, not really. That's I'll not get really the answer. At some point. Uh, that's not really the answer. You know what it is. I know what it is. It's it's you ain't packed already. So. No. You're not excited exactly. about that because you got to do, I know just, I know you like by heart and I know how stressful it is like packing to get on these trips. I, you have to take a lot more shit than me and you probably have to get, where's your stuff flying into? Is it into Finland or to Spain? I mean, Portugal, like your parts. Madrid. I fly into Madrid, rent a car there, drive to Portugal five hours or something. No, but your parts, your parts that you're looking for customs, do you need those for your Euro parts? Where are those? Oh, uh, <laughs> they are here in Finland. I'm not going to get them. Oh, so Finland's giving you an issue. I thought you'd sent them to Portugal. No, but that's an issue. They just arrived like one day too late. Uh, maybe somebody, no, nobody from Finland coming on for the Euros? Uh, they all left by that time. So when does the start, actually? Tuesday. So it's what, how many practice sessions per day? How does it work? Blah, blah, blah. I haven't checked. You are completely and totally useless to Tuesday me. and Wednesday practice. Thursday, Friday qualifying. Friday lower mains. Also Saturday mains. Yes. I think, I, think I actually think I'll be doing something with RC Racing TV. Maybe. Monday, uh, when I arrive at the track, I'll... Um, have to rebuild my car. Nothing unusual with that. Um, like any, Preparation not, is great. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not surprised. Uh, I see the Viking went to France, lost his bags. That's one thing you can't have. Oof, he's been having yeah. some issues with that, losing bags. 100% track record with that. You have a bad track record with losing bags. But not it hasn't anymore. Happened. Recently, it's been good. Yeah, he said he waited like seven hours for his bags to come. And his uh, Instagram. And so I assume he's going on to where, what type of track would he be testing on to get ready for for the Euros? Do they have a similar type of track in France? Yeah, some high grip track, but there's nothing quite the same as what the Euros track is. Uh, and are they making any type of changes towards this track? Going into I heard they week? did change. So basically removed both chicanes. Uh, all the features are kind of the same on the track, but they are running it in a sort of different way now, different order of obstacles. Okay. 
be interesting to see. I, I, I have, I'm sorry, but I just think like Kanasa is going to be extremely fast right off the bat. Like, and on guard. Yeah, Kanasa, Maybe not on guard. Ronne Falk, those three. I think Barufalo. Uh, he'll be like he was at the warm up, fast, but not in the mix, really. Who do you think is going to surprise you here right off the bat? A surprise, mm-hmm. a surprise, a surprise. Um, Let's for, not forget the Killicks. They'll be fast right away. Yeah, but that's not a surprise, is it? No, no, but I just was mentioning them. Maybe uh, what if Jona Hartanen could do? Of oh, Valente. Yeah, oh, Valente, yeah. What? Yeah, you know, was like, like, like not very fast. I mean, he made... The A mains, but he was kind of off at the Euros. What was up with Finland? Pe- Peko made it. Uh, I mean, what? He's around fifth in full drive now. <clears throat> Normally he's better in two wheel, which is kind of weird that now he. Is Peko and uh, as, uh, is Peko and Yuna going to the Euros? Yeah, they'll go directly from 10 scale Euros to 8 scale mm. Euros. So I would say Yuna will be a surprise if he makes the main. Yeah. Or, I would be. Even, Yuna and Peko, both of them. They, they I, I have the potential be, to be very fast. Right. Okay. I would say that. Um, I think they have the potential to make the main. I would be surprised if they made it. I would be more. Supp- mm, yeah. Where are um where are the where's um the Majubis? Uh, still I racing, mean, but I said like lower level, lower aspirations. Let's say. Like kind of realized they're probably not going to be pros. there at the Euros. Yeah. I would think he's at the Euros. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. It's going to be interesting. I'll be, uh, I think, live. Oh, sorry, live RC. RC Racing TV starts our coverage maybe Thursday. So we should have yep. good coverage. Uh, I am looking forward to that. I will be freaking out over that. Oh, guess what the, the title sponsor for Euros coverage is? Do you know? No, I don't. Invisible Speed. Really? Invisible Sponsorship. No. So. Wow! Congratulations, you got some invisible unicorn money. Definitely unicorn money. It, this all hinges on uh, people actually purchasing the course <laughs> thanks to seeing the advertising on the stream. We have some features that we're going to do. Nice, to, you know, show parts of the course relating to the racing on great. the track, the high grip stuff. So, yeah, awesome. I uh, Matt, I think I'm going to be doing something as well with RC Racing TV virtually uh, for Friday and Saturday as well. Comment, commentating? Maybe, maybe, uh, or maybe just interview, like interviewing. I need to find, uh, I need to find um, a top American driver that's going to that's going to the world that wants to come on and talk. But the only thing is, I think it's going to be hard due to time constraints and time. Uh, you know the time, but I'm excited. I uh, um, I'm I'm really excited to see how Rana Falk. Am. I want I would love to see Rana Falk. For fuck's sakes, can we get a fucking clean start, please? Exactly. Fuck. I remember at the warm ups, well, the IBC race, he's in third, goes around that one, that one eighty, and then boom, boom, com- on his lid, completely to the back. I want to yep. see what the Viking can do when he gets a fucking great start. For once. It hasn't happened yet. It has not it's happened. Mayako. Not yet. Hey, we haven't done something for a while, and we might as well do it before we leave. And uh, it's going to be hot laps. We haven't done hot, hot laps for a second. Yeah, let's end with that, because then yeah. I have to finish packing and yeah, move on. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to... So the purpose of hot laps, people, is basically we're going to say something, and Joseph... Has to answer in as minimal three or more or less three words. Not three. Okay, right, we're gonna stick three. We're gonna start off with number one, Coelho's European Championship. What Coelho's? His recent European card? Championship. Yeah, yeah. Great but shitty. Okay, okay. Juan Carlos Canas. Uh, 
almost the favorite. Okay. Oh wait, almost favorite. Almost. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Almost we'll give favorite. you the. Sorry. We'll give you the. We'll give you no, that. no, it's three. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was four. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Um. Hmm. Let me think of something hard for you, American. Let's 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 go. Let's go over. We got the visions race coming. Uh, okay, visions race coming up in America. Hopefully, true vision. Good question. Good, good, good answer. Good answer. Good answer. I, I almost want to say I want to I want to ask you about the TLR car, but I'm not. I'm going to stay away from that because I know you're going to say something rude, and then Barry's going to be on me. I'm not gonna do that. Um, Probably still shit would have been my answer. <laughs> exactly why I'm not gonna say ask you about that. Uh, that. We will that we will that is purged from the records just now. Jake, you did not say that. Uh Ongaro versus Kanas. Fun to watch. Yeah, I would agree there. I would agree there. Uh America's chances at the world. Slim to none. Whoa. I'm just being. Whoa. I don't agree with that, but whoa. I mean, it is going to be difficult, but the cream rises to the top. Um, All right. Well, I'll get one more, and then I, I had it on the tip of my brain, too. Um, uh Give me, I have one. Oh, but, mm, mm, mm. I had one for you. Uh, what color? So, I I don't know what to ask you again. I don't know what to ask. Slim to none, really? Like that just sent me for. Okay, 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 okay. Here's one because I'm issuing a challenge to all of the top UK racers in eight scale that can attend RCGP in August because you can all attend it. Everybody can attend it. Skidmore's, Clancy, Craddock's. There's no, there's no, no, like, there's nothing. If, you, if you're if you a pro racer, you can attend, you can drive it, you can run it, you can run RC2. Do you think, all right, who do you think will, do you think the top UK racers will come out and race? And if if so, who will win RC2? You can get, you get three names. Sam. I don't know them. I mean, if Thomas Musso goes over, then he'll. I think, I think uh, if, he's a strong candidate for the win. You think Musso can beat all those like, like Skidmore's, Clancy, all those guys? Uh, if Skidmore goes, then he's familiar with that track and he's won the UK Nationals, so then he should win. Yeah. I don't think they are going. I know. Unfortunate. I wish they would. Skidmore's. Yeah. That's gonna, race. They're going to skid less. That week. That's race. That's right. Or they're, they're going to let Musso come over there and win on, on British soil. First big That's international right. eight skill race. I hope they come. I hope they come. I hope people come out to the RCGP UK and support it. It's going to be good. JQ, um, I wish you and the team good luck at the Euros. I want you to have fun. Um, <clears throat> maybe you'll send me some video. You think? Uh, maybe. I just want a few portrait videos, you know. I really wish if if I'm, I tell you what, this is a race. Like if tomorrow I was told, can you be here by by Tuesday? I would be there by Tuesday, somehow, some way, somewhere. I would love to go to the Euros and check it out. Anyway, Joseph, I see your attention span has gone. Uh, you know, I can only expect so much from you. So I'm gonna let you go. Thank you for your time. So, guys, this was kind of like just a throw together podcast for. That I wanted to talk to J- J- Joseph before he left. Went to the Euros. We'll have you on after the Euros. Hopefully, it's a win for Mayaku. I'm hoping. You know what? I can't even say that. Let's expunge Not that. Let's expunge that from whatever whatever I just said. I shall not pick any Mayaku driver anymore. Yeah. That's- so after the Euros, then we can have a sort of full recap on. Both 10th scale and 8th scale euros. I mean, 10th scale euros are still going on when we record it. So. Yeah, but I think we'll probably do that this week, um, to be honest. We'll have, okay. uh, I'll have Martin, the, the chairman, on 
uh, as a guest as well. Yeah. And, and uh, next week, eight scale only. Yeah. All and you know what? Up. I think we're probably going to release this. Should I release this today on Saturday or should I just wait? Yeah, I think I'll just release it today on Saturday. Uh, I just wanted to say, hey, happy 4th of July to all of our American listeners on Monday. If you listen to this on Monday. And uh, have fun and be careful with those fireworks and get ready for some racing. We got, Joseph, there's a lot of racing left leading up to the Worlds too. A lot of racing. Lots of racing. Yeah, but for me, it's good because it's been a ridiculous six months. And this Euros is like the yeah, end you get of to, it. And yeah, you don't have some, nothing after this. Off. Yeah. Uh, first week of August is RCGP. Right. And then I'm going to go to the Swedish Nationals the week after that. And then a few weeks after that is the Worlds. So really, uh, now the next weeks, there'll be some more time to sit back and do testing and Invisible Speed stuff. And Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm I'm proud of you. Invisible Speed is the title sponsor of the coverage, or yeah, of Euros, and also a sort of replay sponsor for the Worlds. Then, so ooh, big moves, big moves, big moves, big it's moves. Like go big or go broke. Uh, that's uh, that's kind of like yeah. I I mean, it was like before. It was like let's just get there and go broke. No, now yeah, it's, now it's go big go big or go broke so i really really hope if there's people on the fence thinking about the course that during the euros they'll see the light and they'll purchase it so there'll be some perks also for people who sign up during that euros week yeah and also uh just so people know the euros will be streamed on youtube and facebook and we will be sharing them on the nnrc i guess i don't have access to the jq uh sm page anymore after the great hack uh so i have no access to that so you might make me admin there <clears throat> and um yeah man have fun actually I... we are actually gonna rebrand that facebook also to invisible speed we basically we're going big yeah i, I like so. that i like that uh I, you see that the big you, you know you, you like my new branding here I, I like it uh finally got done six months after we were supposed to do it uh, we re- we completely rebranded, and all the pictures came from Circus it's, RC. By the way, it's your style. It's messy, which is your style. So it's yeah, good. exactly. Yeah, I love it. Anti, like not you, like see how yeah background. You got your car and your twenty thousand. Yeah, but background is messy. Actually, look, there's a photo booth set up and all kinds of stuff going on there. And the, I forgot to charge the lights, and it's a mess right now. Yeah, but. I think my, my setup's gonna be dialed her pretty soon. I just got something pretty good. I didn't like I did an unboxing video. I was not very happy with it. My very out of sync. I'm gonna fix all of that. I figured out how to fix all of that. Got some stuff coming. JQ, have fun, safe travels. I hope everything makes it on time. And you get all your bags and all that stuff. Uh good luck to everybody. Have fun. Don't get Thank in trouble. You. I won't. Don't get in trouble. You see It'll me. Be all the, serious. I mean yeah, just don't piss off anybody. I mean, anybody of consequence that could kick you out of the Euros. Uh, I'll be good. Yeah. I think you may be, yeah, good. You should probably re-dye your hair again because it's starting to grow. So re-dye it. No, I did it today. Actually, that's why it looks darker right now. Oh. It was all so... like super faded already. So right. I redid it now. It's going to be good. In a couple of days when I hit the Euros, it's going to be. Yeah, Ready. maybe I'll dye my hair for the worlds. Okay, if you do that, then I have to re-dye my hair again. Yeah, but I have to pick. We have to pick a color. What color should I dye my hair? I think I should just do it platinum. <laughs> then it just goes with my beard. I wanted to do yellow and blue, but then you said that would be turned Sweden one, and then I that would be turned into Viking, and I can't do that. So now I have to pick another color. Well, think about it. Yeah. What do you guys think? If I go to the world, if hoping, uh, what color should I dye my hair? Now, what color should JQ dye his hair? Because we'll probably be fucking doing stuff together anyway. Like crazy stuff. Well, this type of stuff. Anyway, man, travels, safe travels. Thank you to everybody that sh- uh, that tuned in. We hope you enjoyed this. Um, we, like I said, impromptu podcast, just catching up with JQ. We will be back to our regular schedule next week and um, tune into the Euros, guys. In, it should be good. 
And thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. We can't do it without you guys. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, get ready. We're going to have a 200th episode live. We're going to do it big. Maybe ah, yeah, we're going to help and get TZO give away some tires and stuff like that. We'll see what we get. Uh, so, yeah, tune in for that. Thank you to the patrons of the podcast. We can't do it without you guys. If you wish to be a patron, there's a link in the written description. And, of course, thank you to, to all of our sponsors. They are Invisible Speed is our title sponsor. TZO 200 Tires, High Tech RC, TNR Fuels, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Lugs Racing Tires, JQS, are we still calling it JQS and then JQ Scales Motorsports, Invisible Speed, G Spec RC Tuning, Papa Willie's Tracks and Tonic, Sun Pedal USA, Racecraft USA, Clinic RC, RCGP, House of RC, JTPC, and the DR Race Shop. Uh, JQ, have fun. Uh, yeah, should be good. Remember, everybody, RC is for everyone. Try to be a good RC ambassador this weekend and uh, have fun and send it. And look forward to these Euro. I'm, ex- I'm getting excited for the Euros, JQ. I'm trying to just calm down because I know like Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's just going to be like, like I'm not going to blow my load. I know it. I'm not trying to blow my load Thursday. I'm just trying to be calm and, and not get too excited. You know how it happens when I get too excited the first day, and then the next two days, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's only practice. Don't get too oh, excited. Okay. Yeah, all right, cool. I won't get too excited about practice. All right, Joseph, uh, would you like to say goodbye to everybody before you go? Goodbye, everybody. How about Thank that? you. Thank you for your time, Joseph. I appreciate it. It was fun. Thank you, guys. And, um, oh, yeah, remember, Nitro's the glory. E-Buggy pays the bills. We have coupon codes affiliate links, all that stuff in the written description. All that helps us out, everybody. And check out Invisible Speed. If you like the book, you'll love the online course. It's written by the... Performed by. It, also, it, Spanish version incoming. Yep, Spanish version. It. And I'm going to be doing another you. Spanish podcast very soon, uh, probably after the Euros. And uh, yeah, check it out. Invisible Speed by the green-haired man-child to my left. And uh, thanks, Joseph. Talk to you later. Have a good one. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.